so welcome back to my channel. Um, so in this video, um, happy Autism Awareness Day by the way. Uh, it's Autism Awareness Day the 2nd of April. Happy Autism Awareness Day. Um, in, um, in this video, um, I wanted to carry on talking um, about um, behavioural, about, about compensation. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the kind of ways in which someone might compensate on a shallow level and then on a deep level. So, um, first of all, though, masking, behavioural masking. Now, behavioural masking um, is uh, a bit more basic than shallow compensation, although it's on the same kind of like spectrum as shallow compensation. Um, Behaviour masking is very superficial, it does not support active participation in two-way interaction, it simply allows the person to blend in and to hide their autism, um, so that they're not standing out. Um, it includes regulating, increasing, uh, includes regulating pre-existing behaviours, so that can include increasing pre-existing behaviours or dampening them. So, examples of behavioural masking then. First of all, we have avoidance. Avoidance is where the autistic person might avoid um, social situations where they would stand out. Number two, we have holding back. Holding back would include things such as um, not revealing your true thoughts in a conversation. So you might agree with others and hide your interests. I do this. Um, I, yeah, like just simply like nodding your head, smiling, kind of not really, um, uh, not really showing disagreement and things like that, um, just to avoid conflict and because it's a lot easier just to go along with what everyone else is doing. This can result in problems when you agree to do something, and I have done this before, just to fit in and blend in in the moment without really thinking through about what's going to happen afterwards. So <laughs> I've done this before. In, and it's really awkward. So in the moment, you just say, yes, I'll do that, because it's easy to do that in a moment. And sometimes in a moment, I think, yeah, I can do that. That sounds great, in the moment. But then afterwards, I'm like, no, actually, I can't do that, um, because, like, I can't always think forward into the future like that. Something in a moment might seem doable, but when you're having to, like, think really quickly in a social situation, you just go into default agreeing. And then after it's like, oops, actually, I can't do that. Then you then have to explain to the person, actually, no, you can't do that. And then that's really awkward because that involves more communication, which is difficult and stressful enough. So again, what often happens is I don't contact them. And that can be really, really awkward. Um, the next one might be to suppress. So that um, is simply, say, suppressing things such as uh, sort of body movements, like, say, flapping your hands and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I do that as well. Um, you know, like my, when I get really excited, if I weren't to be masking, I, I like to flap my hands and jump up and down because I'm quite kind of physical in, in expression of feelings. But when I'm in a social situation, um, I try and hide that. Um, so yeah, suppressing. Uh, number four would be basic social etiquette. So that would be smiling, making, trying to make eye contact. You know, so it doesn't really help you make friends any of this or really to... It doesn't really facilitate two-way interactions or anything like that. It's just very basic blending in. So yeah, do try and do that. Number five, superficial assimilation. So that would be things such as dressing and speaking like a group. So using a group's language and for group's interests. So that, um, uh, an example of that would be, uh, particularly when I was younger and I tried to find out about how people my age would dress and I tried to dress like them. To, um, you know, I try to take, you know, you, you start to realise if you try and take care of your appearance, you know, you sort of blend in a bit more. Um, and things like that. So that's superficial assimilation. Now shallow compensation, which is a little bit deeper than that, um, is where you actively produce new social behaviour. It does not, however, support social cognition. It's, really, it's merely just based on um, sort of rote repetition. It's very mechanical. But it does help participation in a two-way interaction, although um, in my case, it hasn't really helped me make friends or anything. It might help participation in a two-way interaction, say, when I'm in a more formal setting, such as when I was doing voluntary work, um, but it doesn't really help me make friends um, because it doesn't support social cognition. It's still pretty basic. Um, so this can include, number one, planning and rehearsing conversations before they happen. Um, I used to do that a bit more when I was a teenager. Um, uh, if you saw one of my previous videos, when I read out one of my diaries, and I did, I, I read out um, a conversation, a sort of pre-planned conversation I was going to have with a woman who was um, providing me with um, private tutoring. Um, 
And that was because when I was a teenager, I literally had no idea of how to do conversations at all on a kind of adult level. You know, I, I, I had no idea. Um, so I really had to spend time thinking about it very intellectually. Um, as I've got older, I don't do that anymore, mainly just because, I don't know, it, it takes a lot of effort and, you know, and I've just got better things to do with my life than sitting there trying to think about a conversation that's coming up, you know. It, that can make me quite, feel quite stressed actually doing that. So I tend to just kind of go go into the interaction and just hope for the best, really. Uh, but I know some autistics do plan and do rehearse and carry on doing that into adulthood. Um, so I used to do that a little bit, but I don't do that anymore. Um, number two would be um, copying behaviour. So this would uh, be things such as mimicking phrases and facial expressions from others. Yes, I do that a lot. Uh, even to the extent where sometimes I can be aware that I'm actually uh, impersonating someone else's voice. And this can sometimes be a bit annoying um, because it's almost like I feel um, I'm, I'm like an actor or something. Like sometimes I think, hang on a minute, I'm sounding a bit like my brother here. I don't know if I actually am. Maybe if my brother heard me speaking, you wouldn't think that. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> but I, I, I have this kind of like feeling that my voice is like that of my brother somehow. Or um, that you know, or someone else that I spent a lot of time with, I'm starting to sound a bit like them. I think non-autistics do this as well. I have heard non-autistics say they do this, so I don't think this is unique to autism, but I'm wondering whether it happens more for autistics, so let me know your thoughts. But certainly that has happened to me, and I think that definitely is to do with the whole copying thing, and I'm very much aware that my behaviour is copied and is mirrored. Um, so number three would be uh, learnt social rules and scripts. So this would be where you ask others set questions, you might engage a bit in small talk, you might... La you might um, sort of uh, turn take a bit so yeah I do try and do that because so these are sort of social rules that you've kind of learned through intellect say through reading books watching films other people telling you you must do this make sure you ask the other person questions as my mum would always say when I was growing up so yes yeah, so you, you learn this through pure intellect and just other people telling you really you're not picking this up naturally these are things you've had to spend time and effort finding out about and watching other people but you do it without really understanding why you're doing it because you don't have the inner social understanding it's all very surface it's very rote but yes I do try and do those things so learning social rules and scripts um, is very relatable because I do do that um, but it's not easy and it's not natural and it's very hard work number four would be um, using your special interests uh, to guide the conversation so this kind of puts you in a driving seat a bit so you can take on a little bit of control um, yes I do get a lot I remember when I was at Age UK I would often um, talk about my special interest in food and cooking it helps me that my interest is actually quite a socially acceptable one it might be harder if your interest is saying drain pipes but um, being interested in food and cooking is quite a socially acceptable interest to have and many people are interested in food and cooking um, although I don't think they share the intensity that I have and um, certainly when I was at Age UK I did spend a lot of time I'm talking about food and cooking um you know <laughs> yes everyone knew how much i love food the amount of time i was spent talking about food and cooking it did sometimes um get me into a little bit of uh, deep water though when uh when when i i would be talking about this again i couldn't shut up um because i am very verbose i when i get started on something and i start talking i have this real problem of stopping so um the manager would be like anna you need to serve a customer because quite because i'll just be literally just be talking about food and forgetting that i'd other things to do so that could be a problem but yeah using your special interest can make you feel a bit more socially competent it takes the weight off a little bit it makes you feel like you can get through the social interaction a bit more because you're talking about something you know a lot about uh, number five would be to reduce social demands. So this would be, um, say, one-to-one -one conversation, for example, rather than groups, because one-to-one, -one, there's less to process. Um, I find group interactions particularly difficult because um, there's, a lot, there's more to process, and I find it really hard to shift my attention from one thing to the other. I'm very kind of like one-directional you know, very mono, um, I find it very hard to like, shift my attention from one thing to the next, so there's a lot of information coming at you in a group, and it's really hard to move from listening to talking, listening to talking, so then I tend to shut down, I tend to like zone out, I'm not really hearing what other people are saying, because I'm still trying to like formulate my response, and I can't formulate my response while listening to, what, oh, and it's really hard work. Um, you could probably relate to that if you're autistic. So reducing social demands, one-to-one -one conversation, obviously being my support work is a lot easier. Number six might be um, things such as like counselling skills. It says, for example, you might listen to, repeat what the partner says. 
to give the impression of being a good listener without having to mentalise. Yes, I do that. I'm very aware of doing that. It comes back down to great acting again. You can appear to be so socially confident. You're just not at all. You're just literally just acting. Um, you know, you're like, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. You know, because this is what you see other people do. So you're just copying it and acting it out. And then obviously it gives the impression, a false impression, that you're socially skilled when you're not. It's just a complete act. Um, but yeah, I 100% relate to that. So I do that for use, using sort of like counselling skills in inverted commas. Um, and number seven might be taking on a false role. So this is where you might appear to have false confidence. You might come across as more extroverted than you are. So yes, I do that as well. And that obviously that can then result in identity confusion because you're not really then aware of who are you and you're just constantly putting on roles all the time. Okay, so I'm going to be moving on to video number two now. Well, I'm going to be talking now about some of the strategies that people who use deep compensation employ in social situations. So moving on to video number two now.